people i'm bharat acharya welcome to our new video so today i'm going to teach you the pin diagram of 8051 8051 as you know is a microcontroller which means it has an internal processor internal ram internal rom okay that's inside it has 40 pins using these pins it counts how many people enter a mall how many nodes are there in a currency machine what is the temperature should the compressor be turned on or off should the heater inside the microwave be turned on or off is the car reaching the correct speed should the airbags open in case there is an impact etc all of these yeah these are the fabulous features that you can do you can control using a microcontroller hence the name so i'm going to teach you the pin diagram in the way it's supposed to be understood by a student not just the theory way but what can be done with these pins i hope by the end of this lecture you have enough curiosity and inspiration to start making small projects yes ad51 is the number one chip used in the world to make college projects those mini projects that you make in fact for years people were making even their final year project using ad51 so yes understand the pins properly not only for from scope of learning this answer okay this is now coming out of experience i have taught this back for 20 years uh all big topics that you learn eventually in ad51 like timer section which forms the backbone all interfaces serial port io ports uh, designing interrupts etc they all have some or the other reference to this diagram so the foundation of all those big topics is laid here in this one single video students who've learned ad51 from me in classroom lectures they know i take one full lecture just to show the pin diagram because i know while doing these pins you're laying the foundation for all future topics of ad51 okay now without further ado let's begin i hope you also see the presentation is very different for this video i'm not doing this on the board because there is so much i want to put in in this diagram putting everything on the board then erasing then redrawing it in different size etc would just break the chain of thought so using the advantage of computers and presentations i've changed the way i'm making this video i hope you appreciate it i'll be very eager to know your feedback on the same okay let's begin so this is the ad50r microcontroller it has internal rom and internal ram yeah it's not a microprocessor which is just a processor the microcontroller has everything inside along with its io ports and those features which are going to come right in front of your screen very soon so first of all the internal rom what is rom used for rom is permanent memory non writable uh, read only memory holds its information even if power supply is lost so what do you store inside rom programs like for a simple example this remote control has programs what do these programs do they identify the key that is pressed display the corresponding information on the screen and of course most importantly send the appropriate signal in serial wireless form we learn all of that in ad51 to the receiver over there which will take the appropriate action are we clear so that's the program tell me there is battery which gives power supply open the panel remove the battery i put the battery back should the program still be there of course i don't want the remote control to stop working if my battery dies the moment i replace the battery it should still work so the program should not be lost even if power supply is gone that means programs must be stored in permanent memory so they are stored in rom so what is stored in ram then data what is the data inside this remote control songs my friends contacts and uh, my image is no the data is the temperature the fan speed the mode in which your remote control is and any timer data probably if you want to switch it off after 2 hours automatically and things like that and those are data which change on a day to day basis so it has to be stored in a writable form of memory and that is ram i remove the battery and i put it back that data is gone i don't want it there is default setting of 24 that will be appeared will be there on the screen and i can obviously change it the way i want that's why these buttons are given in the first place all right so program memory is rom used to store program and data memory is ram like i said used to store data but this was inside i've not started the pin diagram now i'll tell you how this whole lecture is going to be first i'll show you what these 40 pins are along with the alternate function i'll just show you what they are use that much part of the lecture as a revision when you're watching it the second time then once you know what these 40 pins are you know what you're learning then one by one we'll take every pin and learn, learn it to its full detail to the point that a student needs to know about that pin i'm going to explain to you okay so let's begin these are the 40 pins of ad51 the first ones 
X1, X2. They are connected to the crystal oscillator. What does it do? It gives a clock supply. So they are called clock input. Standard frequency, 12 megahertz. You can always have different frequencies. Like any microprocessor also that you buy today comes at a variety of frequencies. The standard operating frequency was 12 megahertz. Of course, there's a reason for it, which you'll know in the due course. Reset. Used to reset the device. Every device that you own has a reset button. So does AD51. When you press this button, the contents of the RAM are gone, but the contents of ROM will retain. The programs will remain, the data will be gone. Uh, pay attention to the directions wherever you see a direction, like reset. Uh, it's very appalling to see a student drawing a wrong direction in the exam. When I'm correcting or I'm seeing solutions and I see a wrong direction, uh, it's not a casual mistake. It pretty much shows that the student has not understood the signal and has just mugged up the signal and put any direction that has come to his or her mind. Because if you understand the signal, it's next to impossible to draw a wrong direction. Does AD51 reset us or do we reset AD51? Come on, like as I said, it just, it's so absurd when you see a wrong direction. So we reset AD51. AD51 gives a signal called ALE. ALE, I'm going to spend a lot of time on. It's address latch enable. It's used to separate out address and data. So address and data go in a multiplex form. ALE is a signal that separates them out. I'll tell you in detail. Right now, I'm just telling you what these 40 pins are. EA and PSEN. That's called EA bar and PSEN bar. Bar means active low. These signals are used to control the external ROM. They are related to external ROM. What did I say? External ROM. Yes, you heard it right. So this is internal ROM and RAM. AD51 is not rigid. It has internal memory, but allows you to expand and connect external memory whenever you want, as per your requirement. You don't use them all the time. On a remote, you'll never connect external memory. To your fridge, you'll not connect a memory chip. But to your phone, you do. Your phone comes with internal memory, but allows you to expand. Most phones, not all, allows you to connect external memory. So do, do digital cameras and things like that. So AD51 also has the provision. If your circuit demands more memory than what is available, you can always connect both external ROM as well as external RAM. When you connect external ROM, that's when these two signals come in handy. What do they do? I will explain to you in the due course. First, I'm just making it familiar. You should know what all are there. BCC, ground power supply. No surprise here. 5 volts power supply. The standard 5 volts standard was established by 8085. Just a little bit of trivia. That's how 8085 got the name 8085. Before that, it was called 8080. That's the pre-74 era. That's when different electronic companies were starting. This whole industry was starting. So different companies were trying different voltages for logic 1 and logic 0. Intel with 8085 made established this market rule that henceforth in electronics logic 1 will be 5 volts. That's how 8080 got rechristened to 8085. So that 5 signifies that. That was just a piece of information. Came to my mind. I never work on a script. I love all this so much. It just, it just runs in me. And whatever comes to my mind, I tell. So apart from the normal information, these extra tidbits, just, they, they, it came to my mind so I couldn't hold it back. But anyway. So that same 5 volts power supply is maintained, is become the universal standard, the industry standard. So in AD, AD, AD51 also, logic one is 5 volts. So it's 5 volts and 0 volts, VCC and ground. Now come the four ports, AD51. Other information is just so eager to come out. There's so much over here that's going to come. Anyway, so these are the four ports of AD51. All ports are 8 bits. All ports are bidirectional. So students ask, so what can we do with ports? Everything, everything that AD51 does, whether your anti-lock brake should work, whether traction control should work, how would it work, when the airbag gets deployed, when the compressor comes on, is all decided by these ports. It's like, what do you do with your hands? Everything you do eventually is done by your hands or your feet. They are, they are your extension. They are, they, that's where all actions take place. Similarly, over here, actions that AD51 does. You may connect LEDs over here, you may connect keyboards over here, you may connect sound output over here, you may connect anything and give it different outputs and that's how you control the environment around you. That's how it becomes a microcontroller. So the essence of the microcontroller are its I.O. ports. AD51 has four ports, they're all bi-directional. So they all can be input ports, they all can be output ports. That's why the two-way direction, all right? Pay attention, like I said, on the directions. Now, if you count, if you like to think ahead of the teacher, 8 into 4 is 32. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 32 plus 8, 40. 40 pins are over. So the pin diagram should be over, but it's not <laughs> because many of these ports have alternate functions, and that's where all the marks of AD51 are. Okay? 
serial port rxt txt this forms your serial port as you can see the bitwise graphic that you saw over here signifies that data goes out bit by bit that's serial communication those are alternate functions of port 3 port 3 line 0 and 1 and there are interrupts which sense the impact that there is an accident that's what triggers the airbag to be opened interrupts sense the change of temperature when there is a change of temperature a to d converter sends an interrupt that interrupt it comes to know or it informs that something has happened and that's how the fire alarm say for example you have those fire alarms in hotel rooms or in various corporations where there are a lot of people external events into the system come in in the form of interrupts they come in in the form of interrupts don't draw wrong direction a person who draws this wrong doesn't know anything about what he or she is talking so yeah like i said it, it's a very clear indication that the knowledge level is slow t0 t1 these are timer inputs they provide clock to the timers what do these clocks do they count the notes when you put money in a currency counting machine when you go to the bank you see those notes come out though you see in that machine where they put a bundle and notes are counted these are these pulses as an example of course i like to teach everything with real world example what's the point of learning something if you don't know how to use it in the real world where it's used in our day-to-day -day lives then it's just going through the motions everything over here has some of the other use in our day-to-day -day life i'm going to be telling you all of that anyway these are people entering a mall these are products which we which have been manufactured by a company going into the packaging department etc so those are time o'clock pulses and finally read and write signals used to connect external ram remember i told you some time back you can connect both external ram and external rom if you connect external rom these signals come into picture if you connect external ram these come into picture you may connect both so both will come into picture as you make your system these are all your 40 pins with their alternate uses no i have not explained anything at all i just told you what these 40 pins are now one by one they weren't much more amount of explanation i could just tell you if you're watching this video for the second time or the third time this is all you need this is your revision you already have learned the pins this is your revision for it if you're watching it for the first time now you're going to be learning each pin in detail okay so this was the introduction all right so you want to watch the whole video you want to learn the entire subject the way it's supposed to be learned with real world examples come on my website www.bharatacharyaeducation.com the link is given down below over there you'll find courses of various processors and controllers that i teach i teach more processors also as soon as i get the time i'll make courses for them right now in tremendous demand is c programming course c and embedded c course i'll be making it as soon as i can the moment i do it people keep asking questions every day the moment it's ready you'll come to know anyway the fee for any course is 1499 yes if you take multiple courses you get discounts the more courses you take the bigger discount you get automatically the site gives you the discount you don't need to apply any coupon code your subscription is valid for six months you can watch every video as many times as you like i've seen many i won't name any but i've seen uh, educational platforms where there's a limit to the number of times a video is asked to the number of times number of hours of the course consumed we don't have anything like that you can you're a student you want to learn i'll be only happy if you watch the video again and again so as many times as you want unlimited views for your entire course keep in mind you not only get access to the videos which are already there if during your subscription time i add more videos like i'm at creating this new video for ad51 so all the people who are still subscribed to ad51 they still get access to it so all new videos that i'll keep adding you'll get access to them till your six months of validity is there you will also get pdfs with every video so you're sorted you don't need to buy any textbook learn the concept from the video open the pdfs the pdfs are constantly updated with new points better presentation uh, any typos are there those are rectified etc etc plus you get pdfs of viva questions and mcqs the new thing that has come which i feel is the right way of testing a student theory answers yeah they are good but people can mug up and write mcqs you can do nothing about it if you understood the topic only then you can tackle it and we keep adding new questions to these mcqs that's why i said latest so every year so i've got students from all over india all over the world in fact every year during exam time i keep getting these new questions from students if i see something which is interesting i feel it's going to up your game i feel it could come in any competitive exam i keep adding it these to these mcqs so you'll always get the latest version with the most updated question the best of the questions plus you get direct access to me once you become my student you're most welcome whenever you have a doubt this is my whatsapp number text me on whatsapp 
as soon as I'm free, I will reply. Generally within a few hours or by the end of the day, for sure, I'll reply. But yes, I'll solve your doubts. Some students misuse the facility. They ask um, me to solve their homeworks, their exercises. No, that's not going to happen. I look at it, I come to know very clearly. This is not something that I've told you. It's your college teacher's question. No, that, that is where you come into picture. My job is to teach you the subject. If anything that I've taught you, not understood, you're most welcome to ask. But solving your homework is your thing. That's how you will grow. If I solve your homework, how are you going to grow? Anyway, okay. That's the link on my website. We are continuing with the lecture. I hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Study hard. Do well.